Next, we have Heather Worrell, the design director, I'm sorry, the director of design technologies at Ratio Architects. Heather comes from us from Raleigh, North Carolina. So Heather, what kinds of changes have you noticed at Ratio in terms of project review? Yeah, so we, um, I have a PowerPoint I'll show in a minute, but we have, uh, we have a process during our, during design, um, which we call live design, and then Autodesk took that, um, but we had it trademarked, so I think we're good. Um, but we have a live design process where we work with the clients um, one-on-one, -on -one and we do a lot of uh, interaction with them, obviously in person, so we've had to change you know quite a bit of what we're what we're doing there so I'm just going to show you some some of our stuff that we've had to work on this we actually worked with ratio brew works um, with this was for an interview with them so <laughs> we were able to get on online and then this other picture is just from in our office uh, yesterday in fact um, of course we'd rather be actually at the brewery um, to present some of those topics um, but our typical design process, um, this kind of hands-on work, obviously this is not allowed anymore, <laughs> so we can't, we can't do this. This was right before uh, we all were required to stay home. Um, and this is a document that we developed a design narrative for. Uh, do, you, do you have the ability to share your screen? I don't Can you not see? No. Oh, okay, not hold yet. on. Let's get it back in there. Screen one. Share. Oh, there we go. There we go. All Got right. it. Got it. Okay. So remember everything I said from before. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So anyway, this hands-on approach um, with our clients uh, not allowed don't do that anymore. This was right before uh, we all had to stay at home uh, that we got some of this uh, involvement with our clients. And then we had to move to uh, online. Um, so it's showing uh, our clients all this information online. We've, we, some of this stuff was in, in SketchUp, so we found that as a tool to um, like very easily let them see kind of different color blocking. Uh, during schematic design, we're still using sketch up quite a bit um, for this live design process. Of course, we'd like it to like be more integrated with Autodesk, but um, the tools are just, you know, our users still are a little bit uh, hesitant to use some of those tools. Um, so that's what all those are. And then uh, these graphic meeting minutes were required to, to present these as as part of this design narrative to uh, to the school system, they're pretty tech savvy, and so uh, and it's savvy client in general. Um, so there's that, and then um, for like our internally, like how we do documentation review, anyways. So this is more on the construction documents side, doing technical reviews. We are using Bluebeam. Um, so that's just one area that you know we're continuing to evolve, um, and then we started using forms just to to make a a technical review summary. Um, so we have a whole bunch of other documents that we uh, that we have our technical reviewers use, but this is kind of just the you know just in summary where things are with the project, and then on the back end of that. Um, so this is forms within uh, the Microsoft Office suite, we can start to get information about like what we need to train our own personnel on. Um, so we've just started this, so you, obviously we don't have a lot of comments in here on different things, but I imagine we'll start to see a lot more data coming through um, through those forms. And then for the, we do have that same client, um, we do have some client mandated uh, review tools, so uh, Wake County Schools uh, requires us, uh, they end up setting up the Bluebeam session and then invite everybody to it, and so they have a whole bunch of people on their side that are reviewing and providing markups, and we have to respond to those. Um, so Dana, I don't know if you want to pull up that audience poll. Um, so just about, you know, I don't know if any others have seen this, that the clients are reviewing the documents. Um, I like the process myself, 
that keeps us all pretty well informed of what we need to get done. Looks like there's a bit of fluctuation there. But mostly nowhere sometimes. So nowhere let's sometimes, share yeah. those results here. Looks like the majority is sometimes, but probably not. Yep. Yep. So it's nice when you have when you have that client that is is able to um, provide some of that stuff um, for you. Uh, let's see. And so again, this is just within Bluebeam, and we have you know all the different the client markups and our markups, and we have to respond to each one of them. So um, within Bluebeam, you can click on the comment and uh, then say that it's complete. And so we have to do that for every design phase of the project. Um, and then, uh, so for BIM 360, this is probably where I want to spend more time. Uh, we. Uh, again, we had a pretty large project, this, this convention center project that just got moved into, um, uh, or we just started going on BIM 360 with it, and we have our whole project team. So we, it's quite a large project team. We have like two engineering firms, you know, for each of the engineering uh, groups, um, a number of interior designers. Um, a few architecture firms, <laughs> so we have to get everybody on board, and because, you know, why not? I was like, well, let's try and use the the uh, review tools within within BIM 360 um, to to review our documents. Um, we did have some like people were not happy about it, <laughs> so they didn't want to learn new things. Uh, but the the main Imagine thing, that. yeah, <laughs> the main thing that I really like about it is that the backgrounds are staying updated. And so each week, you know, when you're when you're doing your documentation, um, as you create a new set or new, like you can have all of your different models published with you know all the 2D views that you want to have. You can put PDFs, and these are all PDFs here. But if we come down. Um, to our different uh, different files somewhere in here. This is still a bit, but these are all of our um, all of our files that we have in the project. So um, those the backgrounds update, the comments remain. So that's one thing with like with Bluebeam is that it you know the data can get out of date pretty quick as people if. You know, if your project team is moving pretty fast and somebody's done a markup like last week, you might have already picked up all those comments. Um, so that's that's one thing where I I like the fact that you know all these the markups and the issues will stay um, on the sheet, and then you can you can update it further. Um, I think somebody mentioned in the comments that you can you can adjust like what you're publishing so that your typical 3D view you're not going to have all of those crazy levels everywhere. Um, so you can make that adjustment within the publishing settings, and then you can do the same thing um, over here with um, your markups. So there was a question I saw in the chat before I got on about the difference between markups and issues. So issues is this. Warning symbol over here. Markups are markup symbol. Um, so within uh, the one thing with markups is that you can't assign those to anybody unless somebody tells me different. Uh, but Autodesk told me that, so um, but I wouldn't be surprised that they don't know. Um, so the the markups not assignable, and even when you make a you know if you're making a markup in here. Um, you're going to notice here that you have this private thing. Um, so that's, you know, this markup is just for you. I don't know why that's super valuable. Um, so you always have to come in here and set it to published. Uh, there's another thing called reviews, which I haven't done yet. It just seemed like one more step that I didn't want to make everybody uh, take. Um, and so that has to be made public so that everybody can see it. And so the issues, so that's done. You can see that it's published. Uh, the issues is a separate thing. So what I've been telling people is that if you make a markup on a sheet and you want somebody to be assigned to it to go fix it, then you have to make an issue to match that markup. So it's a little bit of double work that you have to have to assign. So that's 
it's unfortunate, <laughs> but uh, it is it is what it is. Um, any any questions? Any questions come up? I can. It doesn't look like no. it. Okay. All right. Um, so there's that. The other thing that I found uh, within the document management, um, so we have the sets um, that, you know, these, those sheets are coming directly from your project file, and then you can upload PDFs into this, uh, they call it plans for whatever bizarre reason. Um, so I've renamed that to make it uh, more understandable. Um, but keeping the weird plans name in there. Does anybody know why they called it plans? It's so bizarre. I know that there's also ways with the BIM 360 project creation that you can create templates, which mm -hmm. might help, especially for those of us who are having to create dozens of projects every day. Yep. Um, so that will definitely help because setting these folders up, especially after the fact, is, can be extremely tedious. Yep. Um, I know there might be some forge apps and different things like that um, for those of you who are, yep, there you go, you see it, the ratio template. So yep. that definitely will get you a lot of that started and a lot of those naming things consistent, which help. Yeah. It does look like we have a question. Um, we have a question from, I, wanna, I don't want to mispronounce the name, Achiva from North Carolina asking, nice. can you explain background? Oh, the background. So, uh, so it's literally the background information of of your drawing. So even within this, the you know these are PDFs that were brought in here. Um, so this is a PDF. You can see this is version one. Uh, but if I were to upload another SH two hundred six, um, that would become version two. But the markups and the issues would remain would remain there. So unlike Bluebeam, where you'd have to like do some magic of copying over a whole bunch of comments, which I don't think would happen. Um, the backgrounds can continually be updated. It almost kind of like automatically slip sheets it for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And so, um, so with the markups, you know, the uh, they can, you know, if something gets done, at least you have a check to see, you know, Brad said that he got this thing done. You can go back and say, oh, yeah, Brad did get it done, and they can just delete that markup out of the project or set it to, um, yeah, and set the issue to complete or however you're working with it. Um, so Do you that. coordinate with your consultants on their published sets? Is that something that you share permissions with them or even mm -hmm. maybe the client that you've been seeing? that they're interested in seeing some of this stuff? Yeah, yeah, so the published uh, documents, we we created um, some files, some just BIM 360 guides for our uh, consultants uh, so that they always have access to it. And um, you can, in sets, you can set it to have different, uh, different sets that match the publishing sets. <laughs> um, so in this guide, it just kind of runs through like what you need to do, what you need to be naming it. You know, this is for this is how we just have our all of our projects set up, um, and so that we're making sure that we have all the most current data that we can out there on BIM 360. Looks like there's a bit of chat going on about BIM track. It looks like James Klein is asking if anybody's having any experience with that to streamline the markup process. Um, it looks like some people are saying that you know, BIM track can, can utilize it within the actual software, um, mm -hmm. different things like that. So do you have any familiarity with So I definitely encourage yep. you guys listening to the call, check out BIM track. It looks like they have some really wonderful markup tools as well. Yep. All right. Is that, I wonder if that's an add-in or they, they also keep uh, adding so many apps within um, within BIM 360. I just looked today and there were a whole bunch of uh, new new apps available um, to bring into your project. Um, so I feel like I've gone on. I want to get, I want to make sure that other people can come on the line. Uh, one kind of last thing that we started to do just during um, 
during this time frame was we set up a project for our typical details and like the typical sheets that we have uh, you know in our project sets and so this is a place where you don't have to have um, the design paid version but you can get signed up for docs and review details so we've set that up um, for uh, for our projects and um, it's been it's been working it's been working pretty well so I'll just continue to let to let you know on how that how that proceeds um, I think there's there's still some stuff that needs to get figured out and there's so like <laughs> like you said there's so many buttons and so many mm -hmm. places to go look at so many permissions and um, yeah, especially for me, the craziest part is when you go to create a package, you have to know to like click that button down to, there's just a whole bunch of different places yeah. in here you got to click. Yeah, I forget, there was a new one that I found today. Let's get back onto my... So with your details, is that a project that's kind of a container file that people can pull from and maybe comment on and, and do things like that? Have you noticed that it's pretty easy to copy... Uh, sheets or 2D views from one BIM 360 project to another. I can't say that I have seen that yet. Yeah, so this we set it up a little bit differently. So these we just pulled the PDF. So you can see that design collaboration isn't even activated for this project. So it's just document management. Um, so we made a PDF of all of the details. So we, we have container files um, and we grabbed all those details, put them into one file so that we're also updating like detail components. These are all the things as our projects have, some of our projects have gone on hold. Um, so we have all this work that needed to be done anyways. And so now we have, uh, we call them BIM turns, <laughs> working on um, a lot of this stuff. Uh, so these are just PDFs um, that are in there. So it's not the live, uh, live views from the model. But again, as those details get developed, um, we'll pull new versions in and just verify that all the comments have been picked up. So it's a little, you know, it allows us to kind of back, back check on a lot of that, a lot of that work. Yeah, that's fantastic that you can, especially given that, you know, a lot of these discipline committees and things like that who don't have the opportunity to meet face to face, they can just come up here and collaborate on these types of details and, yeah. Um, you know, if there needs to be additional ones or what have you, they can just upload them right up here. So that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. really fantastic. Yeah. And like some of our, like we get email, like the BIM team gets emails from time to time from more of our senior staff. And so, you know, we, we'd always struggle with making sure those, those got integrated into our template. Um, so a lot of those, uh, you know, we're going to, Put, they're not in here yet, but we would put those template sheets in here, and then those individuals can come mark it up, and then we have like one place where we can go look and make sure that we're, you know, picking up all of the changes that need to be, make, be made. And so in terms of those types of things where, for example, the details project, would you just add the company to that so that everybody has permissions to it, or is this small group that would have access to that? Um, it would, I th you have to add the members one by one. By one, yeah. Yeah, I, so I think, there's. I think Forge is creating some apps that might streamline okay. that, but yeah, yeah, that seems like a, especially for, I know Ratio has multiple offices, so trying to add every single person individually, that yeah. just seems like a nightmare. Yeah. But it, yeah. it seems, once again, it's just, a, just such an easy way to collaborate up there and have everybody have access mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And plus, you know, like if people are just looking for, like, how do you draw this thing? <laughs> like, then they can come here and see how they draw it, even if it's not something, like, we want them, we want them to pull it live from the model, not necessarily from, uh, like, from a typical details file, because it shouldn't be a drafting view. It should be a live view. Um, this at least can give them a place to come and look for all that information. You know, I, like when I started, we had these big giant binders <laughs> with all right. the details in them that we could go reference. Exactly. Like, those are gone. Um, maybe. So it looks like Dan Warren is asking about the service of Insight, uh, which we, we know we can, we, we can add to our project as a service. Uh, are you leveraging any of the information from, from Insight? 
Uh, we have had a few projects um, doing some things with Insight, uh, like some of the we attempted to do daylight studies, um, but we ended up going back to Sapphira. Uh, mm -hmm. There was at least in um, 2020 we had some issues with uh, with the the materials, and we worked. Uh, very hard with Autodesk to get it figured out, but you know that weird like yellow exclamation point in the corner of your materials now? Yeah. Well, it turns out that that was causing an issue in some form with our daylight analysis. Uh, so I, want, yeah, I guess that's looking at a lot of the materials and their thermal and physical properties, and so if those mm -hmm. materials can't be found... Yeah, that's something that at Smith Group we're trying to find a workaround so that people don't have to be on VPN to be able to render and utilize yeah. landscape and all of those good tools. Yeah. So that definitely is a great tip, Heather, to think about. Yeah, so um, like I said, I think it ended up with that project because we just were not making it, like we weren't getting the daylighting credits that we wanted to, to get lead, but we ended up um, using Sapphire, and I think they both came up with the same <laughs> the same uh, result anyway, so maybe oh, it was fine. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of, it was a good test at least. Looks like Robert Judd has started using Procore coordination issues, which integrates within Navisworks, allows connectivity to PBS and Procore, allowing both 2D and 3D integration, mostly for construction coordination, would, but would be helpful during design also. Not sure if you've heard of Procore. I yep. certainly have not. Yep, we uh, we have another number of contractors that use it. Um, I think its pricing is uh, it used to be project based. That might have changed. So, like pricing wise, it wasn't always a super awesome answer for us. Um, but uh, yeah, we have we we have used used that in the past and. Um, but again, mainly it's it's on the contractor side. I do. There is one other, you know, all the buttons, all the places kind of thing that I, <laughs> at least when I was creating issues, um, there are there are permissions based on issues that you have to uh, you have to navigate. So. Keep that in mind for your project. So that was one. I was like, why can't nobody can make comments? I don't understand. So you have the permission level set up by uh, the you know the type of person or the role. You can do it by entire company as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then another thing, like just kind of getting your projects in line that you might you might consider doing. Like we don't need all of these during. Uh, the commissioning, observation, all that stuff. We don't need that during design, so I've turned all those off. Um, and then the same thing with uh, root causes. We just need coordination and design. Um, so those are a couple things that kind of hung me up for a while on why can't why can't people make issues and um, why are there so many issues and choices that people need to scroll through. So that will kind of help on the on the back back end to maybe get a little bit more buy-in from your folks. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have Noah who's been sharing some comments about BIMTRAC and he has some input that he would like to share about his experience with that tool, with BIMTRAC in terms of markups and, and how he's use, utilizing yeah, it. Cool. You, you there with us, Noah? Yeah, are you able to hear me? I am. Oh, Hi, excellent. Noah. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> It's going well. Good um, to see so, you. <laughs> it's great to see everybody's faces. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've been using uh, BIMTRAC for a little over a year now at Air St. Gross to help um, with our coordination efforts. Um, originally, we had taken it on on a project that had gotten really too far down the line without starting a coordination effort, and we knew we needed to do a ton of coordination really quickly. Um, and so we were just looking at it as a way to sort of speed up the process, organize um, the issues that we were finding. Um, the, the process is really, you know, you, you do a Navisworks clash detection model, you create your, your clashes, you group your clashes, and then you can turn them into issues in BIMTRAC. Um, 
the it is a third party software you are buying licenses and the way it usually works is you know, the, the architect or whichever firm is sort of leading the coordination effort buys a block of licenses and then gives them out to their consultants on the project. So um, if it is something that you're looking for, you might, you know, want to talk to your consultants about working in a little bit of support for the, the cost, but you know, the, the price is pretty reasonable um, there. And, and what it allows is once you've done the coordination in Navis works and you've created those issues um, and turned them or turned them into issues, they are viewable directly in your Revit session. So you could just be working in your Revit model. If you're the structural engineer and the architect has identified, you know, 20 structure related issues, you can filter your list. It's got an add-in right there in Revit for you and it shows you, you can click on it and it takes you right there in your Revit model live to the issue. And, it, and if, the, if any additional information has been given, it can be there. If you resolve the issue, you can say you've resolved it and, and, and the uh, person who created it is notified and they can review that it's been, been done. So you don't have to go to a BIM 360 hub at that point. You don't have to go to a Bluebeam session. You can just be working in the model. And so while we first took it on as a way to get through our like massive clash detection really quickly. Uh, what the team then continued to see is like, you didn't need to start even with the clash detection effort. You can just as easily as we were seeing with the blue beam, se blue beam sessions, as we were seeing with the um, BIM 360 comments, like you can just while working in Revit, see something that's wrong and say, using your plugin, this is an issue create issue, have the snapshot of your screen and say what it is. I mean, it's the type of thing we've been doing for years where we might do a little snippet of whatever's on your screen and shoot it off to a consultant and say like, hey, we need to fix this. But rather than it just being getting lost in your you know, list of in, in, inbox emails, it is right there in the list of, of BIM track issues assigned to the, the specific consultant um, and until it's resolved, it's going to stay on the list. And it is tied, like geolocated in the model um, right away because you had shared coordinates when you when you originally set up the project. So it's uh, we've we've been enjoying it. Fantastic. I know uh, Revisto also has some capability of going back and forth between Revit, so you can visualize some of those comments and markups. Uh, within Revit as well. And I know that's usually yeah. on the contractor side so, of things. So yeah, we had looked at Revisto as well at the time when we were looking at a solution. And what we were finding is Revisto does a ton of other things too. And so the sort of issue resolution and coordination is just one of many things um, that their specialization. And so they were priced at a point that was if you're looking for all of these other things, it made sense. But if you were only looking at just coordination and re between models, like it didn't quite compare. So sure, um, sure. They, they're like vi 3D visualization um, support was was a lot better. You know, BIMTrack doesn't have a model environment. You're using Navisworks. You're using Revit. It isn't mm -hmm. sort of a standalone software at all. Kind of probably going back between element IDs, really. Yeah. Awesome. Looks like uh, Ed Maya, I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your last name, asks, has anyone used clash detection in BIM 360? Uh, Noah, Andrew, Heather, anybody? Um, any clash detection utilizing the BIM 360 interface or service? I haven't, mostly because it, it's not part of the AEC collection or part of the BIM 360 design contract. So like, even if you're doing Revit in, in BIM 360, you would need to buy a separate license to be able to do Navisworks in BIM 360. And so we haven't bothered. Right, right. Yeah, Autodesk likes to make those structures pretty complicated, right? 